This is your crypto bull run guide. 19 tips not to screw everything up because a lot of you are going to screw everything up. And I don't want that to be you. I want you to make the money. I want you to live the dream, get your financial freedom, sail away with the wife and your beautiful kids on the yacht in the Caribbean while everybody else is panicking during the next bear market. You're sailing smooth. Okay. This is what I want for you. Now, why should you care about what I have to say? I've been through all this shit. I've been here for multiple cycles now. I've seen the wildness that is the crypto markets, and I've made millions along the way, okay? So I kind of know what I'm talking about. Listen up. We got some killer tips here for you on how you can not just survive the bull market, but thrive in the bull market. Let's get into it. So the first one, you need to learn constantly. I know that might sound a bit cliche. Just learn all the time, man. But really, learn constantly. Challenge your assumptions constantly constantly. The amount of laziness and people who are just expecting everything to be spoon fed to them. Sorry, get over your fucking entitlement and get busy. Okay. Get out there and start using those layer twos. Use the bridges. Find out how to buy NFTs on chain. You want the real alpha. You want to make the real money. Get on chain early. Okay. You need to learn how to do that. It's not hard to do. Guides all over the internet. Don't be lazy. Go do it. Get it done and challenge your assumptions. This is a really important one because I have definitely had to challenge some of my assumptions um, during this bull market cycle in particular. Meme coins, for example, something I've always kind of just brushed off and I perhaps mid-curved it too much. I think in 2023, we started seeing meme coins become a real strong meta in the space in the way that they really weren't in 2021. I know we had Shiba Inu and stuff pop up then and Dogecoin previously, but realistically, 2023 started something new. We've seen wild growth in the meme coin sector and... I finally had the aha moment. Of course, it's not just a retail gateway drug for regular people coming to the market. Meme coins are investing in the culture of the internet, the culture of crypto. And that was the aha moment for me. I challenged my own assumptions. I said, well, what? come on, you got to think about this. Why, why are people doing this? Not just dumb gambling and all this stuff. It's actually, no, this is financialized culture. It's a pretty crazy thing to think about. Don't mid-curve stuff, okay? The second thing, and you need to stop having excuses because here's the deal. There is so much free information out there. It's absurd. It's actually crazy. The amount of threads, step by step, taking your hand and walking you through how to get airdrops or how to use different financial applications and stuff like this, how to play the games to get the coins and all that kind of stuff. It is crazy. Video guides. Uh, coin setups, podcasts with industry leaders and experts. There are so many ways to learn. Obviously, you have to be careful of agendas when you're looking at any kind of content creators. We all have our biases. We all have our bags. Okay, you should always make your own decisions. Don't listen to anything that I or anyone else says. Okay, you got to make your own decision with your own brains there between your head. Okay, very important. But still, huge amounts of free information, very valuable information, lots of alpha out there. If you're willing to put in a little bit of time and go find it. Next, learn the information game. This market is a game largely of information. Who can get the information first tends to profit the most. Now, if you're waiting around on Coinbase going, I hope they list the coin over on Coinbase so I can finally buy it, you're going to get screwed every time. Because guess what? All the people who bought on chain months ago for one one hundredth the price that you're going to buy it on the Coinbase listing, they're going to sell to the Coinbase listing. They're going to sell to you when it lists on Coinbase. You're going to lose money. They're going to make money. Okay? You have to get into the information game. You have to get in the Telegram groups. You have to get in the Discord groups. You have to use things like Dex tools to find things on chain early. Right? Again, follow the huge amount of free information out there. Find the people doing the threads and all that kind of stuff because the information is out there, but you have to get good at finding it. Because if you're late to the game, you're waiting around for the Binance or the Coinbase listing, probably not going to do well most of the time. Oh, you can still make a little bit of money, but most of the game's already gone and you're exit liquidity. Okay? Don't play that game. By the way, if you want help getting that information game on lockdown, you got to check out the Wealth Mastery newsletter. It's my newsletter. It's absolutely amazing. My team and I spend about 40 hours every single week finding the best, latest money-making insights and alpha from right across the crypto space. Airdrops, NFTs, uh, altcoin guides, DeFi tutorials, all kinds of chart setups with our uh, uh, technical analysis coming from Rekt Capital. So huge amounts of alpha in that newsletter. You can sign up for free, actually. It's free. 
and join our 110,000 plus weekly readers. Link in the description or the pinned comment on X. Now, the money funnel. Let's talk about the money funnel. One thing that's very effective in this market is taking risks. But the problem is most people take high risk money because it's, I want to say easy, but there's certainly a lot of opportunities to make money on high risk plays in this market, obviously managing your risk. But the problem is people make money on high risk stuff and then they take it all and they put it in more high risk stuff. And that's basically a recipe to lose because you can get lucky on high risk stuff a couple of times, but chances are your luck's going to run out. So you need to keep managing that the same way, but take high risk money when you get it and move it up the food chain, put it into lower risk stuff. You know, you get uh, some 50 X gain on some pile of dog crap meme coin. Great. You can play another meme coin if you want, but maybe take 5% of that money to play with high risk stuff again and take most of that money and put it into your, uh, your Ethereum, your Solana, whatever that still has a two or three X five X potential left in this market cycle. So you take the high risk money, put it into lower risk plays in the crypto space, or just take it out of the crypto markets altogether, buy some dividend stocks, buy some real estate. I don't know, man, but take your high risk money and put it into low risk money. It's the money funnel. Next, you have to understand this is not Pokemon. Okay. You do not need to catch them all. In fact, you will never catch them all. You'll never get every coin. You'll never get every opportunity. So you need to stop trying to do that. Focus on your strengths. Find out what works for you. Like, I don't spend much time in NFTs. I have a few NFTs. They're fun. Great. They're for a laugh. I, I, I don't get into the NFT game. There are people I know that are super into the NFT game, man. They're on every mint. They're showing up. They're in all the discords and all that crap. I'm like talking NFTs all the time. I don't give a crap. Okay. You know what I like? I like gaming. I like AI. I like new blockchains. I like DeFi right? Some of those niches even more than others. That's where my strengths lie. Okay. I don't need to be in every single niche happening in the markets. In fact, here's, here's a simple fact for you. Over diversification leads to underperformance. You don't need to have 50 coins. In fact, if you have 50 coins, you're probably going to underperform straight talk real up. That's real guys. You're going to underperform. If you have too many damn coins, you don't need 50 coins. You don't need a hundred coins. I would say for the average investor, no more than 20. Probably a sweet spot's like 10, 12, maybe. You can probably still do very, very well, just five or six. And if you really have no time at all in crypto, I don't even know why I'm watching this video, but if you have no time in crypto at all, just Bitcoin and Ethereum. That's it. Adequate exposure. Yeah, not going to get the great gains, but adequate exposure. Next, develop an edge. This comes back a little bit to what we were just talking about, but you don't need to do everything. There's so many options to make money in this market. Uh, you can go be a developer if you want to. That's something you can do. That's not what I do. I hate I hate writing code, right? That that shit drives me crazy. You know, what I like doing I like doing airdrop farming. I like finding early alpha. I like playing around on chain. I like DeFi games. I like I like thinking about the money games and, and DeFi. That's kind of cool. I like that stuff. It's interesting, right? So you need to find out what works for you. Do you like looking at charts all day? Maybe trading's your game. You hate looking at charts? You probably don't want to do that. But maybe you like airdrop farming, or maybe you'll be really good at being the guy finding the early NFT mints right? Or sniping those new meme coins on chain. Everything is its own skill set. And you don't have to be a jack of all trades because you'll be a master of none. So find your edge, find out what works for you. It can be two or three things, but it doesn't need to be everything. And that's a mistake a lot of people make thinking they need to be everywhere all the time. And you just underperform and get your ass handed to you nonstop by people who, again, when you are trying to be in too many places at once, guess who's going to keep dumping on you and who you're going to keep being exit liquidity for? The people who had the early information, all right? The people who are focused, and that is their edge. That's what they do. They're there all the time. They're early to everything. And when you come in casually, because it's the new hype thing of the week, you're exit liquidity, okay? That's how you lose. It's a recipe for losing all the time. Next, be curious. Try stuff out. The amount of people who are just stuck on Coinbase and they're terrified to do anything. Oh, what if I leave Coinbase? Something bad could happen to me. Ah, so you just stay there forever and you miss out on all this shit happening. Okay. You got to be curious. And that's part of taking a bit of risk, of course. But I'll tell you, what, if you're still stuck on Coinbase, you know where to start. Go download a phantom wallet, PH Phantom. Go download a phantom wallet, put 20 bucks worth of Solana on it and go start doing some stuff, man. Use some on-chain apps. Go buy a cheap NFT. Go to Jupiter and make a swap. Find a meme coin to buy, whatever. Play around. You're only risking 20 bucks, and then you'll get the experience of actually trying things. Most people never get off Coinbase. So again, if you can just take that step 
and get on chain, you're already going to be ahead of a huge amount of people that will come into this market. You already have a major information and uh, risk asymmetry compared to these people who are waiting around to be spoon fed the latest Coinbase listing to be exit liquidity. Okay. Let's talk risk and you have to manage your risk. It's one of the most important things you can do in this market. And most people don't manage the risk and they get their asses handed to them constantly because of that. Now that can be not using too much leverage. For example, leverage can be a great tool. Things like um, Bybit, great tool, right? You can get nice leverage and it's an effective tool. The problem is a lot of people don't know how to do it well. So they're going to, instead of using one or two X leverage for a long-term position, for example, they're going to use 20 X leverage and get liquidated all the damn time. If you're using high leverage, it has to be very, very specific situations. Most people don't manage the risk and they don't understand that. Now, position sizing is another way to manage your risk. And when we talk about meme coins, for example, see a lot of people will come in, they'll go, whoa, meme coin, this looks great. And I'm gonna put all my money into it. I like the picture of this dog and maybe it works out for you, but chances are you're going to be the rule, not the exception. And the rule is in meme coins and most people are going to lose all their fucking money. Okay. And that's probably going to be you. Now you want to be the exception. You want to be the guy who puts a thousand bucks into something and turns it into a million. That's possible. It can definitely happen. It can happen to you, but the odds are against you. Therefore, you have to look at position sizing. So instead of taking your entire portfolio and dumping it into the new hot meme coin of the day, you might want to only put maybe one or two percent of your portfolio, uh, your crypto portfolio into that. So that might only be a few hundred bucks. And you think, wow, it's going to be boring. Yeah, but if you lose that money, it's not a big deal. If it really does pull those kind of wild, insane gains and you're sitting on, I don't know, $10 million or something. Well, you know what? You did fine, didn't you? Okay. Perspective. Security. Here's another thing that's just absolutely critical. It is somebody's full-time job trying to steal your shit. Okay? There are literally just, you know, offices full of scammers trying to steal your crypto. Their full-time job. Now, you can reduce the risk of this dramatically by doing a few very simple things. Buy a hardware wallet. Link in the description for ledgers if you want to get a ledger. That's the one I use. There's other great ones, Trezor, uh, Grid Plus, whatever. Lots of great ones out there, okay? But you need to get a hardware wallet. Keep your long-term holdings in that hardware wallet, okay? If you're doing crazy degenerate shit on chain, get a hot wallet for that. A wallet that you use just for that kind of stuff, okay? It doesn't have to be a hard wallet. It can be a hot wallet. You can use a phantom wallet for that, for example. And that's just for your, your high-risk gambling stuff that you're doing, okay? Because you might make a mistake and lose all your money. And if you have made money on that hot wallet, transfer it over to your cold storage wallet so that you're not risking a big amount of money on the hot wallet in case you click a phishing link or something like that or approve a bad contract and get hacked because it can happen all the time. It happens to a lot of people. So be really, really careful, okay? Take your security seriously. Next, you're going to make bad calls. Accept it. Deal with it. Move on fast. There's no time for pity around here. Stop. Get over the victim bullshit, okay? It's not going to help you make money in this market. Oh, I, I made a mistake and I lost a bunch of money. Nobody cares. Nobody cares, right? You got to get over it. Sitting around pitying yourself for weeks and days on end. What's the point? Get back on your feet. Dust yourself off. Learn from the mistake. Move on fast. Next, I think is a very, very important piece of advice and something that, you know, I still even struggle with nowadays, and that is to cut your losers fast and double down on your winners. And this played out recently. And, you know, it's hard to call like the Arbitrum coin a, a loser per se, but it certainly has underperformed price wise, right? Arbitrum network. Great. Love it. Use it all the time. Fantastic. Token kind of sucks. Doesn't capture value. You know, if I want to govern the platform, sure, I don't want to govern Arbitrum. I don't give a crap. So it was an underperformer. And I should have doubled down on the winner that I was looking at and considering swapping to at the time, which was Jupiter. Didn't make the move in time. Things moved. Say la vie. But this is a very, very true example. And those are with good coins, not actual like loser coins. Uh, you know, Arbitrum's fine enough. It just doesn't really do very much. It doesn't capture much value. But there are coins that are absolute garbage shit out here. And you know there are. And you're still holding on to some dinosaur coin from last cycle, hoping that it's going to do something or whatever. You got to cut those losers and double down on your winners, right? Look where the strength is in the market. Look what people are talking about. Look what people are hyping up. Look what people are actually buying. Not what you want them to buy, what they're actually buying. Okay, listen to what the market's telling you and showing you, not what you want to try to hear from it. Because it'll tell you, the markets tell you, just listen. Next, you need to understand and accept that 
Markets prefer new coins to old coins. This is a little bit of a follow on from the previous point, but it's very, very true. Market loves new coins. Look at Solana in 2021. Look at Avalanche in 2021. Market loved those. And there's a few exceptions of coins that'll stick around. Obviously, Solana now is the second cycle. Avalanche is the second cycle, so they've done well. But how many other hundreds of coins were launched in 2021 that are now worth zero? Or you know, maybe they're worth a few bucks. But they're essentially dead. Nobody gives a shit about them anymore. They're not going to reach all-time highs uh, this cycle. They're over. They're done. They're dusted. See you later. Okay, or maybe those coins are still around, but nobody's talking about them. Nobody cares about them. I mean, people are still investing in NEO, man. NEO, come on. Like, it's just like super dead. It's a 2017 coin, NEM. Like, even I even know these names, so nobody talks about them anymore, but they still trade. People still trade them. Why? I have no idea. But somebody out there is still holding up that candle, hoping that their bag is going to come back someday. It's done. It's over. Move on. The market's choosing new coins. Most people in the market come in, they want to choose new coins in the market for a variety of reasons. New, better technology, more excitement around it because there's not a bunch of old salty bag holders dragging it down all the time, looking to sell every time it, the price goes up 10%. A bunch of people were, I gotta get out now. I've been holding this for five years. The market likes new coins. Again, a few exceptions, chain link, stuff like that, Dogecoin, OG coins, right? If it's not an OG coin, doesn't have that sort of blue chip status or OG status, then you're probably holding on to something that's not going to do super well. It's going to underperform versus the market this cycle. Next, you need to accept the markets are not rational. They're not. Embrace it. Embrace it. Embrace the irrationality. People send tens of millions of dollars to people who post a, a Solana address on X. Okay? That happens. Market's full of degenerate gamblers and it's completely irrational. It's completely dumb. And I know you're sitting there. You're holding this fundamentally solid, great technology coin that no one's talking about. And you're like, why is my coin not pumping? I did the research and it should go up. And meanwhile, meme coin gamblers over here making millions of dollars a day. That's not rational. In a rational world, your good technology coin would go up and the meme coins would be uh, just a sideshow. But the main meme coins have become almost the main show and your technologically fundamental big partner, whatever bullshit coins Nobody cares about half the time because the market is not rational. Okay. Understand that. Next, do not worry about the profit and loss of other people. The only portfolio in this game that matters is your portfolio. Nobody else's portfolio matters. Not for a second. Doesn't matter if some traders made $2 million or $5 million or $10 million, whatever. It's not your portfolio. It doesn't matter. Okay. You're not that guy. You don't have his history. You haven't gone through the trials and tribulations they've gone through. And of course, in this typical gambler's fallacy, they love to show the winners. They don't like to show the losers. Everyone wants to brag about winning. Nobody wants to say, hey, guys, I just lost a million dollars today. I got liquidated. You don't hear many of those stories, but it's happening to a lot of people all the time. Those very people flashing the big P&Ls. OK, so keep that in mind. But none of that matters because it's not your portfolio. The only portfolio that matters in town is your portfolio. So pay attention to it and don't get distracted by other people's bullshit. And you need to understand this point really soon. This market is player versus player. There's no kumbaya, okay? Everyone's not going to sing around, sitting around singing nice songs, you know? All our coins are going to the moon together. No, 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 no. Those community members, they're going to be first ones dumping on your ass. The community is a very broad concept. And when it comes to particular coins or particular investments or even the entire thing as a whole, most people are wrong most of the time. This market is player versus player. Many times your profit might end up being somebody else's loss. Now, not all the time. Of course, I'm reminded of the uh, there's a great Chinese proverb about this guy, this farmer guy. I'm going to just paraphrase it here, but this is a farmer guy and he... um. He has a great harvest that year. And so all the villagers in the, the town say, oh, you're so lucky. It's so great. He says, ah, we'll see. And then he buys a horse. And all the people in the village say, oh, wow, you got this horse. That's so great. You'll have a great harvest this year. He says, I don't know. We'll see. And then um, his son's riding the horse. And he falls off the horse and breaks his leg. And all the people from the village come, oh, no, that's so terrible. You're so unlucky. He says, I don't know. We'll see. And then uh, a few months later, the army recruiters come through town and take all the young men in the village away, except that man's son, because he got a broken leg, can't go fight in the war. And so then all the people in the village come through and say, oh my gosh, that's what a, what a blessing. You're so lucky. He says, I don't know. We'll see. So don't ever sit around and feel bad about selling. Okay. That's the point here because yeah, chances are when you sell, somebody else is going to buy the coin and maybe they're going to go make more money. Hey, you can always think, Hey, you know what? They're going to buy the coin. And it's going to go up and they're going to make money. Okay. 
But in many cases, if you're selling high, if you're not selling low, if you're selling high, somebody else is going to buy that coin, especially if you're selling near the end of the market cycle. Let's say you sell the top on Bitcoin. Hey, congratulations. You nailed it, man. $247,000 and 20 bucks. Boom. You got it. You're the one guy who perfectly sold the top. Guess what? Somebody else perfectly bought the top. Okay. And your gain is the other person's loss. Player versus player market, buddy. Okay. Never forget it. It's you versus everybody else out here. And again, the only portfolio that matters, the only profit and loss that matters is yours. And you have to take care of that and be laser focused on it. Next, be accountable. I know it's super tempting to want to blame other people all the time, but that's some victim mentality bullshit and it's not going to get you anywhere. You have to be accountable for all the decisions that you're making. Look, at the end of the day, there's only one person behind the screen clicking on the damn buy button or clicking on the sell button or not clicking on the sell button more aptly for most of the situations. And that's you. It's you. You have to be accountable for your decisions. Did you buy a coin? You bought it because you wanted to buy it and you clicked on the button. Oh, but an influencer mentioned it for a minute in a video or I saw somebody, you know, retweet something on Twitter and I bought it because they retweeted about it. No, no, you bought it because you clicked on the buy button, okay? And if you're not doing your research, you can't blame other people. You have to be accountable. You have to be accountable at all times, radically accountable to yourself. Otherwise, you'll never learn any lessons. You'll get your ass handed to you constantly in this market. Okay, guys, we just have two things left to say. And if you've made it this far, congratulations. You're already going to be ahead of the vast majority of people in this market who have not made it through all these video and all these just killer tips on how to actually be successful. You realize how much of this is a mind game. Okay? It's all up here. This is where the money lies. Now, two final points, very critical points. Number one, take your profits or the market will take them for you. Again, player versus player market. When the top comes, there's no orderly exit. There's no kumbaya. And you will either sell or you will put in crushing destructive losses okay that's how it works you need to either sell or you're gonna just ride your bags down in the bear market up to you you have the choice do you want to sail away on the yacht remember we started off with that right you want to sail away on the yacht with the wife in the caribbean and the beautiful kids and enjoy yourself going to nice restaurants worry free you cashed out you got money in the bank you got nice assets real estate whatever you're chilling now you're chilling you're set up or do you want to be the guy who's holding the coin that's down 99% with the other five dudes sitting around in a Reddit forum or a Discord or a Telegram somewhere going, man, I wish we had sold when it was like 100x higher. That would have been cool, huh? Yep, that would have been cool. Could have been you. Take your profits. The market will take them for you. Final point, health is wealth. It's so easy to overwhelm yourself in this market, to want to be on 24-7, not sleep, all that bullshit. You need to sleep. You need to work out. You need to eat healthy. I know it sounds cliche. But it's important because guess what? If you get through a market cycle, and I know because I, I trashed my health before on a, my first market cycle, you know, put on too much weight, drank too much, all the bullshit, right? And I felt terrible at the end. And realistically, your health is your wealth. It's one of the most important assets you can possibly have. So don't ignore it. Pay attention to your health. It's critical. And you don't want to get to the end of the bull market cycle and be completely stressed out and smoking two packs of cigarettes a day and drinking a liter of vodka a day and have 20 extra kilos on, man. You're not winning the game. That's not winning the game. You might have got a bunch of money, but you didn't win the game. Okay? You got a consolation prize, which is the money. If you want to win the game, you want to win the game of life. It's not just about the money. Okay? If you need to be around to enjoy that money, if you don't take care of yourself, you won't be. Thanks for watching.